I'm going to do this Am I the A-hole thread. This Am I the A-hole th thread is titled, Am I the A-hole for telling my wife that I could pay her salary to be a stay-at-home mom? But before that, a little about me. I was a stay-at-home mom once our firstborn was born. And that happened when we were in our 30s. We got married at 33 and had our first kid in our 30s. And I became a stay-at-home mom. But before that, I was single. I was single for a good chunk of my adult life. I was child-free for a good chunk of my adult life. So when I speak on things, I have the capacity to speak from the angle of being a mom, a wife, and I can draw on my experiences when I was child-free and single. So I do that in a lot of my commentary. So with this video, I'm going to speak about this. Am I the a-hole thread? And I'm going to speak to some people who find issue that I don't just talk about um, married life and that I do support the child-free movement. So stay tuned for all of that. To this one. Hi, my wife and I have four children. They're all under the age of five, and both my wife and I are in our late 30s. Our youngest is now six months old, and my wife already talks about going back to work. I don't want her to. She is a great mom, and when she is home, everything is just amazing, and she is happy and not stressed out, and the children are happy. When she goes back to work, she's still a great mom, but she is stressed out, tired, and in a bad mood. So I said, no this time. I don't want her to go back to work. She got very upset and started talking about her life and independence. I told her that neither she or I are independent anymore, and since we are a team and have small children to take care of, and if she means... And if she means financial independence, I could pay her salary and even double it if she wants. I make good money now and I can afford it. She got even more angry and called me a douchebag. I don't think I did anything wrong. So I told her that if she wanted to go back to work, then I don't want to be with her anymore because I'm not happy with all the unnecessary stress. I want a divorce. She started crying. It usually works on me, but not this time. Even in this front page. There's so many different red flags, but I will continue with this before I start with that. Now, a few weeks later, she said she agreed to my terms, but now she is very distant and cold towards me. If I don't speak to her, she could go days and weeks without even looking my way. She leaves the flowers I get her every week on the counter rather than be happy, kiss me, and put them in vases around the apartment like she used to. She doesn't touch anything of the food that I bring her that she loves like cakes and chocolate. There's no glow around her, and we haven't been together in an intimate way since. She doesn't let me touch her altogether, not, um, she doesn't let me touch her altogether, not only intimately. Okay. So I guess he's gotten some feedback. He says, okay, I see that you guys are against me on this one. I will apologize to her and talk to her so that we can reach a compromise. Anyone suggesting a nanny, not interested, not having my children arranged by strangers so my wife can hang out with the adults. If the roles were reversed and she made more than me, I would be the stay-at-home parent. When men talk like this, she is a great mom. And when she's home, everything is just amazing. And she is happy and not stressed out. And the children are happy. I wonder how much of that he's actually asking of her, because if she is excited about going to work and she's expressing that she is excited to go, go back to work, she must need an outlet of some sort. And the fact that he said no, as if he is the daddy, that is a red flag to me because this shows that this man is controlling. And then because he is controlling and because this is his domicile, he is the, the head, the king, whatever, the God, the demigod of this apartment. He is like, if you don't take it, take my stance, my what I say, then I'm going to divorce you. And she said, OK. She agreed to his terms, but obviously she's doing this simply out of compliance. And when this woman decides to get up and leave, and she probably will, he's going to be blindsided because she's putting out all of the, the warning flags right now. She's not happy. He can't touch her. She doesn't even want chocolate. This woman is creating an exit plan in her own mind. However, she has four kids under the age of five, so she has to be strategic.
And this is going to be another Chronicles of George in the making because this man wanted absolute control. And right now, because she just had a baby, she has no leverage. So she's biding her time. Now I have a story on the flip side. And I, like I said, I'm going to tie all of this together. Um, I saw this post on Facebook from one of my friends. A woman has been married to her loving, wonderful husband for 20 years. I imagine she's using sarcasm there. They have two sons. He's a provider and she doesn't work. He's thoughtful, loving and all that good stuff. So the husband um, so the husband became distant, couldn't sleep and they stopped dating one another. He would pace the house at night due to restlessness. One night she confronts her husband. He confessed that he had a mistress for six years. The relationship produced a four-year-old daughter. The mother recently died and the daughter needed to come live with them. She doesn't know what to do. These are the things people don't consider when they cheat on their loved ones, side kids, botch paternity tests, and all of, just all around mess. These things are in the back of my mind when people tease me about dying alone with pets. Okay, so she, she's already, the whole story is basically at the top. Now, this woman has been with her wonderful husband for 20 years and she doesn't work. The important piece of that is that now, and she did it willingly and not having an income for 20 years. And now you're stuck in this situation where you have to decide what to do with your life because your man has been stepping out and was reckless with it, obviously, if it produced a four-year-old child. And so when women want some independence, some financial freedom, some financial independence. There's a reason because you could go 20 years and not know what like things that are happening that are beyond your control. And so now this woman has to pick up the pieces and figure out a way to go in her life. Now, this woman from the Reddit thread was already creating, she had it in her mind that she was going back to work and her husband is attempting to squash that. But we're supposed to just be submissive and go along with the flow and just do what they say because they are demigods and we're supposed to submit to them. But what happens when they are controlling, unfaithful, you know, there are different ways of that, that these things show themselves. It could be in finances. It could be physical, emotional, um, keeping you away from friends and family. There are many different reasons why women need an outlet and need to go to work and need to socialize. I had a woman show up on um, one of my YouTube posts and say, it's interesting that Bourbon Bougie is the antithesis of the women whom she makes videos about. I'm curious as to why she um, focuses on empowering single child free women and their issues instead of happily married men, um, women with kids content. The reason why I attempt to support women in general is because we need choices and we need to be able to pivot when our plan A and B doesn't go the way we expect it to. We have got to be able to pivot because what happens if you if there's a side chick, if there is a um, an affair baby, if your man becomes controlling? I am a pragmatic woman who has lived many different ways and have seen many different things. And women across the board speak to me on these things. And so I know that when things go wrong, women are blamed like, how could you not see? How could you not know? Why didn't you have a plan B? Why didn't you have any money? Why didn't you just leave? So I speak to that because I want us to have a plan D, E, F, G, because I understand life be life. When women come to my space, I want you to understand that I will support women regardless of if you're married, if you're divorced, if you're single, if you never plan to get married, if you don't even like men, if you don't want to um, date men, if you prefer women, that is your business. We will still speak in a respectful tone and we are not putting women in boxes because I know that we have choices and freedoms here in this country until such time as people like these people want to take away our choices and put us back in a box. So I will keep speaking to that. Y'all jump in my comments and let me know what you think on this whole thing. Like, comment, share. If y'all want me to talk more about the comment section on this, I will. Just let me know.